TB118 electrical safe isolation on gas boilers. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video we've got socket and C back and we did a video recently on the TB technical bulletin TB118 and that's the safe isolation of gas boilers and on that video there was a lot of questions so socket and C are back here today and they're going to show us how to use the tester. So it's the D DLM Pro tester. They're going to show us how to use this. They're also going to show us when things go wrong. So on the first video, it showed us when everything was working perfectly well. And we did all those tests. And I'll add a link in the comments below to the first video. Um, but in this video, I'm going to try and go over when, when it's not correct, when things go wrong and then show you what you need to do to, to sort them problems out as well. So hopefully this video will be really, really useful for you if you're a gas engineer. So yeah, let's go and have a look. It's important to remember that any electrical works are carried out by a qualified electrician or a competent person and that any works carried out adhere to the current regulations at the time. Hi Alan, thanks for having me back. Um, thanks for all your views and comments on the last Technical Bulletin 118 video. It was due to your comments that Alan's invited me back. The comments were the procedure we showed you last time. Everything went perfectly as it should do in a perfect situation. But what sort of issues and faults can we expect working in the real world? So in this video, we'll go through a few fault conditions and what they might mean. The first test that we carry out on Technical Bulletin 118 is the safe to touch test. So I'm going to check with my non-contact voltage detector that all the extraneous metalwork is safe to touch. As with any voltage indicator, I'm going to prove it before use on the proving unit. We can see that it operates well. I'll then check the extraneous metalwork. In this case, I'm getting the live indication. That's potentially a very dangerous situation. So I'd inform the customer they need to get a competent person in to look at this problem and then take great care not to touch any more extraneous metalwork in the installation. We're now going to look at the essential electrical check parts of Technical Bulletin 118. For this we're going to use the Socket and C DLM Pro. I'll simply switch it straight to loop. It's then a hands-free test, no other buttons to press. I'll now connect an ear, ensuring a nice clean connection. Then the neutral Finally, the live. It carries out a no trip loop test. We're getting 0 0.8 ohms and a good indication. Now we'll look at different loop readings and what they could possibly mean. So, the last loop test we did on the boiler, we saw a good result for a TNCS system where the earth is supplied to the installation by the network. In this uh, loop test, we switch on. Again, it does the no trip loop test. If all the parameters are met, the result we're getting is 42 ohms and then a check indication. 42 ohms on a TNCS earthing arrangement where the earth is supplied by the network would be too high. But 42 ohms on a TT system, so a system that's earthed by an earth rod, that would be an acceptable result. So telltale signs of a TT earthing arrangement, so you go to the meter box and you see the earth rod coming down from the meter box, driven into the mass of earth, and very often they are supplied by overhead cables. So we've looked at a reading that you may get on a TT earthing system. So we'll see what other indications the DLM Pro or any other loop tester may give you. So if I switch to loop and power on, the red backlight and audible warning, and then the indication is we're missing an earth. Um, no earth at all, obviously a big problem. Um, the highest earth impedance you should have for the TT system is 200 ohms, anything over that according to the regulations is unbalanced. 
Um, so the first thing I'd do here is check all my connections and make sure that everything is connected as it should be and I'm getting a proper reading. So just check how good my earth connection is. Power back on. And yeah, I had a bad connection. I've sorted that out and it's going on to do a loop test. We've got a good indication. Let's take another look at some faults that can be picked up with the socket in CDLM Pro. If I switch this to socket, get a red indication, audible warning, and we've got a flashing neutral indicating that the neutral's missing. If you get this indication in the boiler, um, if power was onto the boiler, it wouldn't look like power was onto the boiler because you haven't got a complete circuit. Um, but potentially you could still have a live in the boiler. So always proceed with extreme care. Missing neutrals can be caused by accidentally snipping cables or when you're stripping the cable, you're not stripping the insulation off far enough. So the screws clamping down on the insulation rather than the conductor. As with any test, the first thing that I'm going to check is that all my cables are correctly connected. Power back on and we gain 240 and the neutrals back in place. Let's take another look at some faults that can be picked up with the socket in CDLM Pro. If I switch this to socket, get a red indication, audible warning, and we've got a flashing neutral indicating that the neutral's missing. If you get this indication in the boiler, um, if power was onto the boiler, it wouldn't look like power was onto the boiler because you haven't got a complete circuit. Um, but potentially you could still have a live in the boiler. So always proceed with extreme care. Missing neutrals can be caused by accidentally snipping cables or when you're stripping the cable, you're not stripping the insulation off far enough. So the screws clamping down on the insulation rather than the conductor. As with any test, the first thing that I'm going to check is that all my cables are correctly connected. Power back on and we gain 240 and the neutrals back in place. I'm now going to look at the safe isolation part of technical bulletin 118. As we can see, I've got the boiler on, the um, LCD is on, you can hear the boiler doing its thing. I've got the fuse spur here, so what I'm going to do is remove that fuse spur. I'm going to retain this so no one can energise the boiler drop the frontage and we can see when I pulled the fuse spare all the lights went out boiler stopped making a noise so it's clearly dead um, so what could possibly go wrong do I really need to do my safe isolation checks with my two pole tester well I'm a stickler for the rules so I, I will carry out the checks I'm going to be using my two pole voltage indicator before I do any checks I'll prove its operation on a proving unit yeah, I'm happy that that all works okay. So I'll do the safe isolation checks. I'll check from neutral to live. Getting no indication as expected. Then I'll check from earth to live. And I'm getting 230 volts. The reason I'm getting 230 volts is because the fuse spur is wired through the neutral. So it's actually the neutral that's fused and not the live. So even though it's open circuit and not working, we've still got 240 volts to the boiler. I know from the comments in the last video that a lot of you guys out there have had this issue out in the real world. So it's worth doing your safe isolation checks every time. While we're on the topic of safe isolation, the first video had a great comment from Sid Wainhouse um, mentioning that What's the point in doing your safe isolation procedure if you're not going to lock off the fuse spur or other means of isolation? Uh, a great point, sir. Absolutely brilliant point. Um, I simply retained the fuse while I was safe isolating um, as I knew I wasn't going to leave the area and I'm in control of this at all times. But if there was any chance that I needed to pop to the toilet or go and fetch some tools from the van, pop out for some lunch, I'd lock off the means of isolation. 
So whether it be a fuse spur, a plug top, or an MCB at the consumer unit, however you're isolating your boiler, um, it's good to lock it off and put a sign up uh, saying do not re-energize. There are lots of lock offs on the market for the various ways to isolate. Uh, an offering from Socket and C is the Socket, socket and C Log 10. It's most few spares, RCDs and main switches. And um, that's got a, a combination so there are no keys to lose. The tester we've been using today for all the Technical Bulletin 118 tests has been this, this Socket and C DLM Pro. It was designed specifically for Technical Bulletin 118 and gas engineers. Um, obviously the blue tests use the top terminals. That's for your Technical Bulletin 118 essential electrical checks so your socket test and your loop test but then we've also added multimeter functions that a gas engineer may need when fault finding on a boiler we've stripped away all the unnecessary features that you get on standard multimeters we have ac volts that's good for single or three phase also is ghost voltage busting we've got dc volts we have continuity to do all your resistance checks and then when accuracy is extra important we've got an auto null feature that takes into account the resistance of your test leads when you're testing it comes with dual insulated silicon test leads and um, these are wear indicating so if you start to see white coming through this uh, insulation you know it's time to replace your leads the prods and clips are all gs38 compliant it also comes with a socket interface so you can do testing at 13 amp plugs. Thank you very much for that. If, if any of you have got any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And if, if need be, then, then maybe we could get Socket and see back to, to answer some more of your questions. Um, I hope you found this video of some use. Um, certainly I found it, I found it fascinating. I, I really like this type of, this type of video, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching.